So I think we've all been there before with, this is actually a really good chassis. However, we do have a, a common problem with the engines. The FA20 flat four just rod knocking for no apparent reason. This happens very common in the Subaru space. Not sure why, but this specific chassis slash engine was 300 miles short of 200,000 miles when it decided to give out, even though the oil was completely filled to the top, going downhill at higher RPM, the engine starved of oil. We can see that this engine is completely bone stock, serviced on time and whatnot. If somebody like me can blow up one of these engines, you've probably uh, had this same issue as well. So we've came up with a common solution for this. Uh, instead of having to pay $4,000, which I think is the uh, going market rate for an FA20 or a, another Subaru engine, we've solved that issue with a very affordable $1,000 uh, 3UZ from an SC430, which we have right here. So essentially we're gonna take the front sump V8, 32 valve Lexus, Toyota Lexus V8 engine out of this vehicle and transplant it into this vehicle here. And we've came up with a complete swap kit and every single part to transplant this into this. And we're gonna show you how to do that right now. <laughs> The Lexus family of engines started around 1990 to 1991 with the onset of the LS400. The predecessor to that was the Toyota Cressida, and that was kind of the start of Lexus's campaign to create something truly amazing. With that said, they have a 32 valve, four liter was the cap back in the 90s for what they were looking for ideally. Six bolt mains, just everything was kind of really worked through to the nines. Spent well over $100 million in research back in the 90s to develop the UZ family of engines. Uh, and this is the latest iteration of that. This is a, a 4.3 liter, six bolt main, 32 valve, four cam, independent coil on plug, you know, all sequentially injected, sequentially firing engine. This, this is a proper low displacement V8. This is a very detuned engine at 300 horsepower, 300 foot pounds of torque. It will never break. As long as you keep 93 octane in this and good oil. This has been one of the best cars. Just unmodified other than like a cat back or whatever it's just very weird that a completely stock bone stock car completely filled with oil would starve of oil uh, you know revving out through the rpm going downhill i mean it's not far-fetched it's just abnormal that there's not enough capacity to kind of accommodate a proper red line could be worse i think what's cool about scion toyota whatever all the new design cars are like they have all these panels for better gas mileage trying to you know get the airflow uh, it really helps out yeah we're gonna pull down all these panels drain the oil drain all the fluids Hopefully we can pull engine and trans directly out the hood. I've never really looked at the field service manual specifically for, you know, engine removal for these. I remember I did have an FA20 like uh, six or seven years ago and nobody wanted to swap it into anything. So I just left it by the curb and some junker guy came and got it. I didn't even 3D scan it. Okay, so we got a snap on set. Most everything should be either 10 or 12 on this Scion. When you go to replace a metric fastener, JIS has a different standard for the head size and stuff like that. So, you know, if you buy a metric fastener here in America, that's not JIS spec, it'll have a larger head diameter. It could be 12 millimeter, but everything's been hit so many times and there's just, you can see all the bumps and road damage. So 12 millimeter doesn't fit, 13 millimeter doesn't fit. What you do is you use an SAE socket, a six point, only a six point, not a 12 point. So half inch, we'll just hammer this on. Hopefully it works. Just a little stop. Look at that. Dude, that away. Yeah. And that, that did it. Yeah, are you showered? Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? All right, cool. That actually worked. That was sick. Yeah, that wasn't, um, like, fully destroyed yet, so maybe the glitter wasn't uh, apparent, that apparent yet, but anyway, it's there. Um. <laughs> Dude, it's like, 
So we're just gonna uh, pull the exhaust off, the drive shaft out, get it to where everything is ready to come out. Engine and trans bolted together ideally. It's probably not gonna go that easy just based on the experience. So that was not as eventful as I thought it was gonna be, but you know. What's really gonna be eventful, I think, is just starting up the V8 and hearing that, uh, that rumble for the first time. That V8 with a very light flywheel is extremely responsive. It revs out super fast. Suspiciously, suspiciously easy to get that off. So maybe this has been off for all. <laughs> This is the shifter, right? It has a, it's mounted to the chassis in the rear and the transmission in the very front. What we're gonna do is we're gonna convert it to a chassis mount only and something that kind of is more out of the way. The entire motor set, the transmission and engine are gonna be moved back five to six inches at least. It's gonna put the transmission right about here and that'll make the shifter linkage significantly shorter. And so within the kit, we'll provide the linkage, the new tripod, and you can see how wore out this is. Yeah, 200,000 miles and this thing is completely haggard. We don't have to drain the trans, but I probably will since I don't have a plug for this specific trans. So drain the trans, drain the coolant, four bolts, two bolts right here, and this is fully ready to kind of pull up from the top. We'll go ahead and start working top side after that, and it'll start going pretty quick after that. It's really important to label your stuff that way when you go back to reassemble it. You know exactly where everything goes and what it's for. Great to be organized, you know. So why do a 1UZ or a 3UZ or a Toyota V8 over K-Series or LS or a JZ? I'll give you a good defense of why not to do um, a K-Series. We have a full K-Series swap kit for this vehicle if you want to do that. We have that on our website at collinsadapters.com. We can put a, a link in the description to the full K-Series kit. That'll be buried very, very low because the main thing here is the 1UZ swap kit. However, the reason you don't want to do a K-Series is because it requires, the K-Series was originally manufactured for front wheel drive. With that said, the bare minimum would be a different oil pan, a different intake manifold, a different exhaust manifold, an adapter plate, et cetera, so forth. You keep going down the line. There's so many things that you have to change in order to make the K-Series work for a rear wheel drive system such as an FRS. The reason you could go with a 3UZ or a 1UZ is because they come with a front sump oil pan. They're already a rear wheel drive system. Um, the only thing you would need is an adapter plate that works with the OEM transmission. We already have the flywheel and clutch system solved and it just bolts in. Another thing, the exhaust manifold is very, very inexpensive. You can buy a stainless set of Tundra, Toyota Tundra headers for a 3UZ or a 2UZ. They all work on 1UZ, 2UZ, 3UZ. They're all interchangeable. And then chop the collector off. In fact, I have some. So even if you're using like just the flanges and some of the tubing, it's worth $100. And I think I've got these for $110 for the set of two of these. How can I even order material in America for that same cost? I'm not saying that this is a great quality or anything like that that, but it's enough to kind of have a start point. All you do is chop off the flange on the passenger side and it actually works. If you convert this to V-band, it'll fit. Another reason why I think this is a good system to transplant is the OEM motors are over $4,000 for a clean FA20 two liter to replace uh, in place of that. And they come with a sweet, what, 185 horsepower. So, I mean, this Pretty whole swap kit with the engine, I think is probably gonna be near that same price and it will definitely outlast an FA20. That, I promise you.
this whole thing is free. Yeah. Really love OEM level stuff. It just makes me happy to see how they designed it, how it all works, and then kind of gives me a, a goal to kind of design towards for um, how I want to do my stuff, you know what I mean? Almost that point where we can just pull it out. The, a big thing are these quick connect fuel lines. We're gonna zoom in here real quick. If you look at these fuel lines, we're gonna get a really close detailed shot of the exact nature of this little swivel here. This has been gone over in other YouTube videos before. However, we're gonna show you a quick, easy way using two zip ties to take off these Quick Connect Subaru, BRZ, FRS, FT86, Toyota FT86 fuel lines in a way that's cheap and effective. You don't have to buy a special tool or anything like that. These are a quick disconnect. You can see in there, inside there's these two tabs. There's one right here two clips right here, one right here, and one right here on the opposite side. And so those are 90 degrees from these two tabs here and here. In order to get these quick connect lines off of these fuel lines here, these go here and here respectively. Just wanted to show you this before we yank the motor out, that way you guys can get a good assessment of exactly how this goes. So in order to get those off, what you do is you take two complete zip ties right here and you just cut the heads off like this. This has obviously gone over in many different YouTube videos, just like that. We have two fresh zip ties. Now there's a serrated end and there's a flat end. You want the flat end to go towards the outside. So zoom in here real quick. Again, we're gonna see these two lines here. You're gonna put these kind of straight up and down like 12 o'clock here. You're gonna take the serrated ends and you're gonna put those towards the inside of the, the hard line here. You're gonna jam this in here like this. You'll feel it kind of get past. You wanna keep, keep it nice and straight. You're gonna feel it get past that hard portion right there. And that's, that's how you know you're all the way in. And then you're gonna do that. This is gonna be the hard side here. So we'll try to rotate that with that inside of it. We'll try to push this in here, just like this. All the way in. And then what you do is you just kind of hold the zip ties like this, push in, and then you try to slide it right out, just like that. Super easy. You wanna make sure that the fuel system hasn't been cycled or started in 24 hours, or if there's a way that you can relieve the fuel pressure, whether it's a Schrader valve, you wanna do this safely because the fuel pressure on, on an FRS, I believe is in the 50s. You do not want that spraying back at your face or your hands or burn your skin or anything like that. I will say this, a really good positive thing about the FRS with the OEM FA20 and the transmission. It is so well balanced on the OEM uh, engine mounts. There's nothing else holding it in, it's just teeter-tottering right now. 50-50 balanced perfectly on those engine mounts. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull our engine stand, or engine hoist up here and yank this thing out. Right in here. On the forums it tells you to use, this is the OEM uh, AC compressor here. There's a 14 millimeter head fastener right there. I believe it's an M10 by 1.25 JIS spec. This fastener here, we obviously have all of our fasteners in stock. We have a full bolt wall. We had an M14 by one and a half, I believe, fastener. And that threads into this hole right here. And we're using that to hold a really sturdy chain to kind of pull up on it. And this went in about at least 25 millimeters. So it's pretty in there. And I feel that this is more appropriate and stronger than the AC compressor fastener that we would have otherwise used. Also, that would have kind of brushed up against the AC compressor, not a big deal. I feel like this is a little bit stronger, more of a solid option to kind of pull the motor out. Not sure how this is gonna go. We've never pulled a motor on, on a, a Subaru BRZ FRS, etc. cetera. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to do this with the exhaust manifold installed. Um, it looks like it's probably gonna come in contact with either the uh, radiator fans or the upper member right here that holds up the center of the hood. Not sure how it's gonna go. We're just gonna do it. We're gonna run into some snags, but we'll we'll figure it out as we go. Again, I've never taken out an FRS engine before. We've gotten clean data from Scion, SEMA, Toyota, and a customer was lucky enough to send me an entire engine out vehicle, which really helped me out last time. And we made a bunch of stuff. We made a K-Series kit for that one. We made a... It's just a, a delicate dance of wiggling and moving and, and uh, trying not to break anything as you pull this thing out. Um, so we're just gonna keep doing, doing the dance. Typically where it gets hung up is on the tripod. 
and we're seeing that just ever so slightly. So, so we're gonna get a pry bar in there just to very slightly push that down to see if that is touching or hurting or affecting anything. I put some cardboard down so that I wouldn't spill a bunch of stuff on a nice floor here. Didn't want to make a mess. And we're fully out, guys. This is really good news. Now we can proceed on to the next step, which is putting the V8 in uh, so we can get it out of the way. We're going to separate the engine and transmission. You can see how easy this uh, comes off. There's not many fasteners holding it on. Obviously, we're going to clean this up a little bit. This has to get shortened up to about right here. So that's something very important. In the swap kit, I believe we're gonna make our own linkage. That is a really thick sheet metal based system, probably quarter inch thick at least, uh, to hold a new set of pins that we're gonna go ahead and design and engineer to get this properly done. However, this is shortened up a very significant amount. I wanna say at least six to seven inches. It's quite a bit. All in all, uh, this could be a lot worse. I thought it had more dirt and grime on it than it did, but it's not horrible. Fortunately, it did have rod knock catastrophic rod knock. A lot of room for activities in here. In fact, I did scan a V12 and I can confirm that a 1GZ FE does technically fit in here. Not with the hood closing, but it does technically fit. I don't think we're gonna go that far with this, but it does technically fit. If you were to remake a hood or come up with a cowl or something like that to kind of make it work, uh, that would be a very awesome, very interesting swap to kind of see. We have successfully pulled out the FA-20 with the trans attached to it. Large engine bay, front sump capable. This is the prime candidate for an engine swap. Good platform for a solid engine swap, whether it's 3UZ, LS, K-Series, even a JZ fits in here. We're not gonna do any of those with, except for the, the 3UZ, we're gonna use a stock transmission, a six-speed FRS transmission, but the rest of those will require like a larger, like a 350Z transmission or something to that effect to hold the power. More on that when we kind of start going into how to install the transmission. Next video, we're gonna go ahead and prep the motor, get that ready to go in. We're not necessarily gonna go through the entire process of how to rebuild a UZ, but there's very minimal amount of things that we need to do to this to get it ready to go into the, the FRS BRZ. And then we need to also prep the chassis just a little bit in order to get the chassis ready. It's mostly the transmission tunnel and the transmission cross member area that we have to kind of remove a few OEM pieces of sheet metal in order to fit our new transmission tunnel reinforcement bracket system. We'll show you guys how to properly drill that in and install that in order to get the 3UZ from an SC430 into the FRS. Mm -hmm.